Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining our live webinar. And thank you to those of you watching the recording. My name is Casey Platt. I'm a career advisor at NLU, working with graduate students and alumni. And today I'm going to be talking about how to ace your educator job search. So before we jump into everything, I want to make sure that you take some time to reflect. I think it's so important to take time to reflect because you know, these, these questions that are on the screen, they really help you to understand why you've chosen teaching as a career. And it also helps motivate you for your job search, especially when it comes to interviewing and applying for jobs. It'll help you to frame your professional brand as an educator. So this first question, what inspired you to pursue a career in education? That is really meant for you to understand your professional brand as a teacher. Uh, next, what teacher skills have you developed in your past experience? So thinking about the teaching skills you've developed or demonstrated in the past, some of you have traditional classroom teaching experience, some of you might have other types of professional experiences, but either way, I can pretty much guarantee you that all of you have skills related to teaching that you can bring to the table. So consider getting these down in writing, maybe make a list or write full complete sentences just so that you can understand and be able to highlight the skills that you have and how you developed those skills or when you've demonstrated those skills. And finally, another question to ask yourself is what is important to you when you're looking for jobs? So it's really important to consider this because obviously besides looking for a full-time teaching job, you wanna think about what districts or schools stand out to you most and why? How flexible are you in your job search? Meaning, are you willing to teach a grade level or a subject that isn't your first choice? And how far are you willing to commute to your job? How important is salary? How flexible are you with the pay that you're offered? These are all really important questions to ask yourself prior to really diving into the job search. So obviously the resume is a major important part of the job search process. I think that this really is your first impression, at least on paper, for the person reading. So really you should have your education. Ideally, a lot of you are either studying at NLU or have studied at NLU. Make sure to display your education. Whether you are licensed right now or whether you plan to be licensed, I would add and licensure to that section and add your licensure and maybe any endorsements that you have. That's really important to keep on your resume, hopefully right up at the top if you're willing to, to display that right, right at the first part of your resume because really licensure displays your minimum qualifications for being able to get the job. They are not hiring teachers typically without licensure, so showing that you have it or you will have it is essential. And also, obviously, your professional experience, or if you have a lot of teaching experience, you can call that section teaching experience. This is really your chance to kind of highlight that last question on the last slide, is what skills do you have? What skills have you demonstrated that relate to teaching? So those bullet points are really critical. And the optional sections that are here, you can talk about some additional education and qualifications that you have. This can be first aid or CPR, AED qualified. If you're certified for that, I think it's great to display that on your resume. Maybe if you have an undergraduate degree that's not really connected to education or connected to the subject matter that you intend to teach, it might be good to add that at a, at a section later on in your resume after you've ex displayed your professional experience. Any volunteer experience can be added there as an optional section if you do have any of those experiences. And language and technical skills are really becoming more and more marketable as a teacher. So if you are bilingual or maybe even if you're intermediate in another language other than English. I do think it's worth displaying on your resume, whether you create an entire section for that, or if you kind of slip it into your objective or somewhere else on your resume, I think that would be helpful. Some general tips for your resume. I can't stress this enough. Use the job description as a study guide when you're creating your resume. You know, there's a psychological concept where if you're mirroring the language that they're using, in the job description, maybe not word for word. I don't know if that is recommended, but I would definitely make sure to touch on all the things that they're looking for when you're describing yourself as a candidate. As it relates to your bullet points, it's so important to use action benefit statements. Don't just describe the things that you've done, but try to highlight the impact 
the things that you've done have had on students or their families or maybe the entire school. Maybe if it's a non-teaching job, talk about the benefit of what you did and how that might relate to something that you can do in the classroom. And finally, make sure that your skills are relevant to the job. I've seen a lot of people try to, dis to describe in bullet points the work that they've done in a non-teaching job. Every non-teaching job has related skills and related experiences to teaching, whether that's as obvious as public speaking or maybe a little bit more subtle as collaboration and modifying your approach. Those are all really important teacher skills to have. And finally, there at the bottom, that is the Career Bridge Resume Guide. It can be found on our website, nl.edu slash careerbridge. So please check that out. It'll be under all online resources. So I've got some FAQ here, some frequently asked questions. I'll skim through these really quick. The first question, I don't plan to complete my degree program just yet. How do I display my current education? I talk to a lot of students who are not planning to complete their master's degree before they start applying for teaching jobs. The idea for a lot of people is that they're worried that they would risk being um, too expensive of a teacher when applying for jobs with not enough experience. My answer, if you do intend on doing that, I think describing your, your education at NLU as teacher preparation instead of masters of arts and teaching, I think that's probably the best way to do it. If you do write master's on your resume, it's kind of defeating the purpose of your plan of not completing your master's degree. So teacher preparation is a good, honest way of describing that you're taking courses, you're getting licensed, but you're not going to complete your degree just yet. I have gaps in my employment. Will this be a red flag to employers? I want to skim through this one because gaps on a resume are common. Please don't worry about having gaps on your resume. Employers are not going to assume the worst so it would be great if you did fill in these gaps, but if you're not able to, or if it's just not going to make sense to fill in those gaps, don't worry. Just try to really focus on your most recent and relevant experiences and make those bullet points really stand out. And finally, I earned my undergraduate degree many, many years ago. <laughs> Displaying the grad data is going to show my age, and I really am worried about that. Um, will employers discriminate based on my age? So my answer is, unfortunately, it's not something we can really control. It's not something we really know if people are discriminating. My hope is that they are not. I like to assume good intent, that people are looking for a good fit. They're looking for somebody with skills and experiences that are related to the position and not worrying about age. I think honesty is the best policy. So displaying your grad date, if it's true. So share that information. Um, they probably will find out from your application anyway. I know that a lot of schools use AppleTrack and that information is, they, they ask for a lot. So they'll probably get that information anyway. Keep in mind though, it is illegal for employers to ask you your age. And it is illegal for them to turn down a candidate because of their age, whether it's too old, too young, whatever it is, it's against the law. So um, do keep that in mind. But really, all you can do with your job search is be confident and just submit your application, um, knowing that you're the best fit for the position, that you're going to be a great teacher. So we've covered some resume tips and some FAQ. Let's talk about cover letter. So first thing I wanna say is that the way applications used to work is that your cover letter would go on top. It would be the cover. Um, unfortunately, things have changed. The resume is a lot quicker for recruiters to read. Um, so typically the resume will, will be read first and the cover letter will come second, which does mean that the resume holds a little bit more weight in the job search process. But that's not to say that cover letters are not important. They are essential. So I do want you to spend some time creating a strong cover letter and answering a few of these questions. So after you've done some reflection, you've probably decided, why do you want to be a teacher? You should have a solid answer to that question in your cover letter and for an interview. That could be an interview question. So getting that in writing in your cover letter is a great way to prepare for that interview question. I also think that aside from describing why you want to be a teacher, why do you want to be a teacher at their school? Really tailoring your cover letter to that specific school can help you stand out as somebody that's not just looking for any teaching job. You're looking for this teaching job with this school. So do some research and get a sense of who you're applying to, not just the position, but who, is, who are you going to be working for? Where is the school located? What's their mission? Really get a sense of, of what you can add to their school culture. And finally, you want to talk about the experiences that have prepared you to be a good teacher at their school. 
and the skills that you've developed. So a lot of the work that you've done already leading up to this point, whether you've been reflecting, whether you've developed your resume already, um, that will kind of guide you in writing your cover letter. And again, you do want to make sure to use the job description as a study guide. Um, it makes this process even that much easier um, once you've really written a strong resume based on the job, the job description of the job you're applying for. Um, and then try your hardest to be brief and straight to the point. Um, I like to say clear and concise is the best way to write a cover letter. They don't need to see a five paragraph essay, typically. <laughs> what they're looking for is maybe three quarters of a page, um, a, a very clear writing sample of you describing your, your confidence in applying for the job and some experiences that you have that make you a good candidate for that teaching job. So once we get past the marketing materials, which are your resume and your cover letter, I do think that networking cannot be understated. Networking is so important because job applications nowadays are very impersonal. You submit these documents to an online job posting and it doesn't really give you that much of a chance to take control of your first impression. And really that's where networking comes in. And I can't stress this enough, Everybody should be using LinkedIn. I think it's a great tool for you to connect with people, whether it's friends, family, somebody who might be a reference or have, has written a letter of recommendation for you in the past, um, somebody you work with now or have worked with in the past, anybody in your classes, even faculty might connect with you. Um, these are people who all might have opportunities for you or even some guidance, just general guidance for you. And this fir first bullet point here, it says communicate with first, second, and third degree connections. First degree connections are people that you are directly connected with. Second degree are people who are connected with the people that you're connected with. So you're not directly connected with them, but you know somebody who is. And third degree connections are a little bit further out there. Um, you might not have any uh, direct acquaintances that know them, but you can still communicate with those people. It's just a little bit different in the way that you approach that. Um, but everybody should be using LinkedIn to, to engage with some networking for your job search because it really could go a long way in, in hopefully securing you an interview. And job fairs. Um, at this point, <laughs> all job fairs are virtual uh, because of the situation. So definitely go on Handshake and check out the events that we have going on at the university. Our university is connected with a lot of school districts, including Chicago Public Schools. And they have some employment events happening this month and next month. I do recommend checking that out www.cps.edu slash talent. That is where you're going to get a lot of information and you can actually sign up for those events if you're interested in working for CPS. Um, we also have another organization, AAEE. Um, they have a virtual career fair going on this month, so I would check into that. That is a nationwide career fair, so I'm not sure if it will be able to connect you to a ton of really relevant opportunities nearby, but it's definitely worth a chance. I know that a lot of schools are engaging virtually any way they can at this point, so it would be good to check those out. So interviewing. So interviewing comes after networking. It comes after the resume and the cover letter and reflection. Interviewing is hopefully the point that you'll reach soon in your job search process. For many people, interviewing can be a bit challenging. Um, and with preparation and practice, I know that you'll be confident and you'll do a great job. And these are some tips on things that you can do to prepare. It might seem silly to study your resume and the job description, but both of these can give you a great idea for some stories that you can prepare. Be prepared to tell me about a time when you blank. Explaining how you've demonstrated these essential teaching skills is a great way to ace an interview, but it's not always easy to describe these experiences off the cuff. So you might wanna have some of these stories prepared, some of these stories ready to go to answer some of those commonly asked questions. Prepare a few thoughtful questions, uh, at least three. I think it's good to add a couple extra questions to your repertoire just in case they answer a question that you've prepared to ask. Now, you don't want to repeat the question or eliminate it altogether. So I do think at least three thoughtful questions would be great to prepare for an interview. And finally, practice. Um, you can visit the Career Bridge to talk to someone like me or my colleagues here. Um, we can help you prepare for an interview, whether it's formally, like a, a regular mock interview, or we can just chat about some commonly asked questions and some do's and don'ts. 
Um, we also use interview stream, which we love to talk about. It's a tool where you get to answer questions off the cuff and record your responses to review them and decide what you should have added, what you shouldn't have added. Um, and it really gives you a chance to, to understand the way that you're responding. Um, this is especially helpful for teachers because a lot of school districts are doing these recorded video interviews where you send them recordings of you answering questions. Um, and that is exactly what interview stream prepares you for. So it's a really good opportunity to use that tool to prepare. Finally, a couple tips for you down here at the bottom. Enthusiasm and a smile go a long way, especially for video interviewing. Um, it's really hard to convey feelings in a video rather than in person. So try to be as enthusiastic and, and positive as possible. Um, you also want to dress appropriately. And for video interviewing, it's the same as in person. You want to be as, as dressed up as possible. Um, and we can always go through interview attire in a one-on-one -on -one if you'd like to meet. Um, and make sure, especially for video interviewing, you need a private space. A lot of people are with their families or friends or, or someone living with them. Try to get a quiet private space in your home. Um, get some good lighting. You can open a window. It's very sunny today. Um, and make sure to use a neutral background, as neutral as possible. So the CareerBridge offers one-on-one -on -one appointments. If you'd ever like to meet with us, please feel free to talk to a career advisor. We can help you with your resume, cover letter, interviewing, and, and really just generally help you with your job search. So any questions you have, feel free to meet one-on-one -on -one with us. And workshops and webinars are always going on, especially the webinars. <laughs> so please visit Handshake, nl.joinhandshake.com, to get some more information about what we have coming up. So that's all we have. Um, this slide is our contact info. So please save this contact info and please don't, don't be afraid to reach out. We're more than happy to help, especially during this difficult time. Our phone number is there and you can also email us Monday through Friday, nine to five. So thanks everyone for joining. We really appreciate it.